friends, my name is Mrs. Ramos and I want to welcome you to this episode of You Church Kids Sabbath School. I am so glad that you've decided to join us today. Sabbath is a special day where we can worship God and learn more about Him. Now it's time to pray. Let's see who will lead us in prayer today. We're the Majet family. I'm Yumi. I'm Kiola. I'm Tatenda. I'm Upenyu. And before we start our Sabbath school, let's open with a word of prayer. Our dear Jesus, who is in heaven above, we are so grateful for giving us another opportunity to come to you in prayer, but also to listen to you as you speak to us this morning through the Sabbath school program. We are so thankful for all the provisions you provide to meet our needs every day. We are also grateful for surrounding us with family and friends and church members who will become our support system in every point of need. And as we speak, and as you speak to us this morning, may you open our hearts to receive your word. We also pray that you might continue to guide us so that you may truly represent you in today's world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I enjoyed praying together with you. Isn't it so wonderful that we can pray to our Heavenly Father whenever we want? He's always ready to listen. Now it's time for our opening song. Do you like to sing? I hope so. Good morning, happy Sabbath. We are the Parks and we're gonna be singing, Good morning, it's Sabbath. Are you ready to sing with us? Let's sing. Good morning, it's Sabbath. The day that I love the very best. I'm happy, it's Sabbath. The day that I love the best. Good morning, it's Sabbath. The day that I love the very best I'm happy, it's Sabbath The day that I love the best One of my favorite parts of Sabbath School is the mission story. I always dreamed of traveling around the world and telling people about Jesus. You're going to love today's mission story called The Boy Who Grew a Church. <laughs> Ten-year-old Joe watched movies and played video games with friends at his home in the Solomon Islands, but he wasn't happy. Joe's family lived in a poor neighborhood in the South Pacific country's capital, Honiara. Neighbors sold illegal drugs, and children stole and got into trouble with the police. Joe's house was a popular place for neighborhood boys to hang out every evening. He noticed that one of his friends didn't talk like the other boys and participated in something called a Pathfinder Club every Sabbath. Joe decided to join his friend at the Seventh-day Adventist Church to learn more. Soon, he joined the Pathfinders as well and went to church every Sabbath. After a while, Joe and the other Pathfinders were invited to fly to Australia to attend a camporee for Pathfinders from all over the South Pacific Division. He really wanted to go, so Mom worked hard to save money for his plane ticket. When Mom was finally able to buy his ticket, Joe flew to the camporee and enjoyed every second of it. When Joe returned home and the neighborhood boys came over that evening, he told stories from the camporee. The boys loved the stories, so they asked to hear more the next evening. Then Joe thought to himself, my friends like to hear about Pathfinders. Why not tell them about Jesus too? So each evening when his friends came over, Joe kept telling them stories from the Pathfinder camporee, but also began to share stories from the Bible. Joe's friends enjoyed his stories so much that they invited other boys from the neighborhood to come hear them too. Soon, 30 to 40 boys came to Joe's house every evening to learn more about Jesus. Although mom didn't have much money, she began to cook food for the children to eat after story time. She somehow always had enough food for everyone. Joe's new friends began to ask him if they could join Pathfinders, and four joined him at church the next Sabbath. More of his friends came to church the following week. The Pathfinder leader couldn't understand where all these children were coming from. Joe, why are so many kids from your neighborhood coming to Pathfinder Club? He asked. What did you do? I didn't do anything, Joe replied. I just tell them stories about what we did in Australia and we have evening devotions, that's all. The leader asked to visit Joe's home to see the evening get togethers for himself. When he came that evening, he was amazed at what he saw. Afterward, he said to mom, this neighborhood would be a good place to open a church. 
He noticed that Joe's house had a large unfinished living room that no one used and asked if it could be used for Sabbath worship. Mom agreed. Several dozen neighborhood children came to Joe's house for church the next Sabbath. All the Pathfinder leaders and their families came as well, and they brought food for everyone. Then something happened that made Joe very happy. Mom decided to be baptized. Not long after, his 20-year-old cousin was baptized too, and so were three of his neighborhood friends whom Joe had introduced to Pathfinders. Today, Joe's living room is packed every Sabbath with about 70 people, and plans are underway to open a permanent church in the neighborhood. Now, Joe is 13 years old. He's humble in appearance and speech, but no one doubts that God is using him in a powerful way. I may be small, but in God's hand, I can grow a church. Like Joe, you too can help grow God's church as you share Jesus with your friends and family. Wasn't that amazing? You're never too young to do the Lord's work. And I know that God has big plans for your life too. Be faithful to Jesus and he will use you to do powerful things. Guess what time it is? It's time for another song. So sit up straight, clear your voice, and I can't wait to hear you sing. Now we're gonna sing, He is Able. Join us. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He healed the broken hearted and he set the captives free. He made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. That's why he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He healed the broken hearted and he set the captains free. He made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see. That's why he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. The Bible tells us to hide God's word in our hearts. We had a memory verse for this week. Did you memorize it? If not, we can do it together. Hi, my name is Keola, and I am going to be reading a Bible verse for today. We are reading from Luke 18, verses 27, which says, But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18, verses 27. Let's try our verse one more time, and this time try to fill in the blanks. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are with God. Luke 18, verses 27. Did you get it right? Let's try, let's say it one last time together. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18, verses 27. Now it's time for our Bible story. Did you study your lesson quarterly? This week's lesson was called Walking on Water. It's the incredible story found in Matthew chapter 14, Mark chapter 6, and John chapter 6. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Walking on Water. The memory verse is from Luke chapter 18, verse 27. It says, 
what is impossible with man is possible with God. Today's message is by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Do you know how to swim? Can you stay on top of the water? A long time ago, Jesus and Peter were both on top of the water, but they weren't swimming. Let's find out what happened. The disciples were in a boat together, sailing across the Sea of Galilee. They had spent the day with Jesus and had seen him do something amazing. He had taken five loaves and two fish and used it to feed more than 5,000 people. How they wished Jesus would let the people crown him king. But at the end of the day, Jesus had sent the people home. And to the disciples, he said, Go ahead, go across the lake in the boat. Then Jesus had gone to a quiet place to pray. Out on the lake, dark clouds began to gather. The wind whipped angry waves against the fishing boat. The experienced fishermen strained at the oars. They pulled harder and harder, but the storm was very strong. The storm continued raging through the night. The wind pushed the waves higher and higher. By now, the disciples were a considerable distance from the shore. Shortly before morning, but while it was still dark, Jesus saw them way out on the lake and decided to go to them. Suddenly, the disciples saw someone coming across the water toward them. They cried out in fear. It's a ghost, they shouted. It frightened them to see a person coming toward them walking over the waves as if they were on solid ground. Don't be afraid, a familiar voice called. It is I, Jesus. Then Peter called out, If it's really you, Lord, tell me to come to you on the water. Come. Jesus beckoned toward his eager and sometimes reckless disciple. Looking at Jesus, Peter climbed out of the boat and began walking along the top of the water. He took several steps. Then he turned his eyes away from Jesus and looked back at the disciples. He may have been thinking, Hey, look at me. Can you believe it? As he started to turn back toward Jesus, he saw the huge waves. He felt the strong winds. He became afraid, and he started to sink. Instantly, Peter's courage was gone. Lord, he shouted, save me. Even as Peter began to sink, the strong arm of Jesus reached out to him. Jesus grasped hold of his outstretched hand and lifted him up. You of little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt? Jesus meant that Peter needed only to keep his eyes on him. Peter needed to keep believing that Jesus had the power to save him. Jesus put his arm around Peter, and they climbed into the boat. Once Jesus was in the boat, the wind calmed and the waves relaxed. And the little fishing boat sailed quietly to the other side of the lake. Today, Jesus says to us, Just keep your eyes on me. I'm here to rescue you. You can't do it by yourself, but don't worry. I can save you. Just keep trusting me. Can you remember a time when there was a really bad thunderstorm? Have you ever been really scared? Well, that's exactly what happened to the disciples. Jesus had just finished preaching to the thousands of people that he fed with the five barley loaves and two small fish. He told his disciples to take the boat back across the lake, and he was going to a quiet place to pray. Well, a little while later, dark clouds filled the sky, and a terrible storm raged over the lake. The disciples' fishing boat was being tossed to and fro, and they were trying to keep it from sinking. Then they looked up and saw Jesus walking on the water. They didn't believe it at first. 
But then Jesus asked Peter to come out on the water too. He went toward Jesus and was actually walking on the water until he got scared. Then he took his eyes off Jesus. We do that sometimes too, don't we? It is so important to keep your eyes on Jesus, especially when we get scared or afraid. Well, I'm going to give you a moment to discuss this thought with your family right now. God created such a beautiful world for us to enjoy, and there are so many things we can learn from nature. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm the Nature Guy, and I'm coming to you from Yellowstone National Park. Now, Yellowstone is known for a lot of things. Some people come for the wildlife, some people come for the scenery, but one of the things that a lot of people come for is to view some very strange thermal characteristics of this area. You see, not far under the earth, it's molten material. Under the solid earth that I'm standing on is molten and very, very hot. And that heats up water in places and it comes to the surface. You can see some steam rising up from some springs just behind me. Uh, this area is just very active in this kind of stuff. There have in the past been a lot of volcanoes as well. In fact, Yellowstone National Park is pretty much one great big giant volcano. Um, and so there are a lot of cool things we're going to learn about here at Yellowstone. There's basically four different types of thermal features and we're going to talk about them. They depend a bit on the um, uh, amount of water and of heat, uh, but let's go explore and see what we can find. So here we are at the Norris Geyser Basin, which has all four of the thermal features we're looking for. Let me first explain about the colors. The color you see is caused by thermophiles which are microscopic algae and bacteria that grow in the hot water. Warm water supports the green thermophiles, and the red ones live in the hot water. So two of the features I want to talk about function with little water input. Fumaroles, like this one on Roaring Mountain, occur because only a little amount of water contacts the hot molten material below. As it does, the water turns to steam and blows out of the opening. As long as there's hot material below and a steady trickle of water, fumaroles will continue to spew out steam. The second feature that occurs with little water input is a mud volcano. These occur when the thermal features are located in limestone. The water and steam dissolve the limestone which creates a muddy mixture. The escaping steam causes the mud to boil. It's kind of fun to watch and listen to. It reminds me of pot or boiling oatmeal. The other two features require a lot more water. This one is a hot spring. In this case, there's enough water that the heat below just warms the water rather than forming steam. The hot water rises in the middle and cooler water on the sides drop down and the heat and gets heated next. Thus, a convection current is created, constantly bringing hot water to the surface. Because the air is cooler, some steam is given off on the top of the hot spring. There are different colors of hot springs caused by the different materials that are dissolved in the water supply. The most spectacular thermal feature is a geyser. It's like a hot spring, except that there is a constriction at the opening to the large chamber below. So when the water is heated, it can't escape fast enough, so it builds up pressure until hot water and steam erupts out of a small opening, creating a geyser. Some geysers erupt every few minutes, some every hour, 
while others may take days, months, or even years before they erupt. So there you have it, four different thermal features that get their energy from the hot molten rocks below the Earth's surface. The question now is, what is our source of spiritual energy? What is it that powers or drives our lives? The Bible says that we should seek after God's power and let him direct our lives so that what we do has good and positive value. Until next time, stay connected to his power. Thanks for listening. See you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Sabbath School class. We learned so many wonderful different things and I hope you learned something too. Let's pray together. Our Father in Heaven, we're so grateful for this time. We're so thankful for your word and the wonderful stories and all the lessons that we've learned. Be with us now as we spend the rest of our Sabbath with our families, the rest of this week as well, and bring us back together again soon is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you again next time. Bye. Now it's time for our closing song. Sing with us. Our time together is over, so we will have to go. Goodbye, goodbye, remember God loves you. Goodbye, goodbye, remember God loves you. Our time together is over, so we will have to go. Goodbye, goodbye, remember God loves you. Goodbye, goodbye, remember God loves you.